welcome back. Today, we're gonna talk about working from home. Before we get into it, I know these are some weird times that we're living in. I wanted to let you know that I'm safe, my family's safe, and I hope you guys are doing okay too. Personally, I think we should be focusing on things that make us happy. Making YouTube videos and helping people makes me happy. So we are going to be talking about working from home and my tips for the whole at home setup. Before this whole thing started, I worked from home for like a day a week or maybe a day every two weeks. And for my side business, there is no office. Like it's my home, so it's completely remote. No matter if you're self-employed or working for a company full time from home, you need to be productive when working from home. One way I've done this is by setting up a businessy type of environment. So I have a desk, I sit at the desk, and I work. My desk has everything I need in order to do whatever I'm trying to do. So that could be my laptop, it's a computer charger, it's my hard drive if I'm editing, it's a notebook if I wanna jot down some ideas real quick. It also includes my cup of coffee. I didn't used to need coffee on the days I would work from home just because it was usually only one or two days out of the week, wasn't a big deal. But now that it's every single day, I've gotten a coffee maker and it's great. I use the Keurig pods and the pods are great. Instead of going to work and using that transport time, whenever I would leave for work, that's when I start making my cup of coffee. That's also when, if I need to set up anything for whatever work I'm doing for that day, I'll take that time there as well. Now one tip that I don't see a lot is have a few different places that you work in from your home. So I do have this desk space and this is the main space. If I'm reviewing code, it's always at the space. Any work where it's kind of hard to focus, I always do it at the desk. And so something like editing or writing code, like that has a lot of focus in general that you already have to give to it. And when you start it, you just kind of go and it flows. That's something I would do in a more comfortable space. So even like sitting on the couch or something like that, it requires so much focus that I'm not gonna get distracted. Reading or researching something, like that's easy to get off track. And so I have to do it at my desk. Same for meetings. <laughs> Usually I'll go between these two or three places. And so I have my desk, I have sitting down in a more comfortable chair. I have the, I guess this bar stool thing, so sometimes I'll work there. Switching it up can freshen your perspective and it's just nice to move around a little bit. Now this is something I do even when I'm at work. I'll set alarms for when I have meetings or even for breaks or lunchtime because you can get so into the code or into whatever you're doing that you totally forget about everything else. If you're on a team that has a stand up in the morning or afternoon, it's very easy to just continue coding or continue whatever you're doing and not take a second to stop and join whatever meeting it is. Especially when you're working from home, like if there's some big meeting going on, you see everyone leaving their desks and you're like, hmm, I should probably leave my desk too and go to whatever it is. When you're working from home, there's no social cue that, hey, something's going on and I need to join this meeting. Reminders are a great way to make sure you're attending the meetings you want to attend and you know what's going on. It's also nice to have a reminder for when to end your day. So if you end at 5 p.m., 6 p.m., whatever's normal for your team, like setting an alarm for you to do that, because usually you'd see people leaving their desks, like if it's 8 p.m., no one's gonna be at their desk at that hour. Or I hope you don't work at a place, I don't know what your hours are. You know, whether it's 5, 6, 6.30, like your team usually leaves, like you'll see people from your team leaving in a traditional work environment. When you work from home, you're not gonna get that cue of like, hey, everyone's leaving. Like I, you know what, this is good enough for today. I'm gonna come back and tackle it tomorrow. This next tip is something I do every day and that's just writing a list of all the possible things that you could do that day. So whether it's reviewing a specific pull request, uh, submitting a support ticket to something, it could be you know working on a ticket that you've been assigned, it's a new feature that you need to develop, it could be setting up a meeting with some of your coworkers or someone from another team to see how they approached a situation that you know that they're familiar with. Whatever it is, write it down. And sometimes these can be personal things too. So whether that's you need to pick up a prescription or run this errand, just write a list of everything down. Another thing I'm a really big believer in is the 80-20 rule. So 20% of the work will give you 80% of the results and 80% of the work will give you 20% of the results. So really trying to figure out that balance 
balance there. When I'm writing content either for the YouTube channel or for LinkedIn Learning, I have some courses over there. Uh, Learning Java Edition 2, so the 2020 edition just came out. Definitely check it out. I completely revamped the course. So if you want to learn how to code in quarantine, that's definitely a great first step. So for LinkedIn, I write all the content and then I present the content and then they do the editing, they do the graphics. Um, I help with the content portion and then the teaching, like being the actor of it. And I work with other people in those two processes too, but the creative is mainly my job. Most days I'll get up in the morning, I'll write for an hour, that's a script maybe for one of the videos, maybe it's two of the videos, depending on what the content is or I'll do research on it. And then after that hour, I put it away and that's what I've done for the day. And a lot of times I'll just try to start writing, like write something, write something, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, just start writing. And nine times out of 10, I end up not changing what I've written because it's often what I wanna say. Just getting it to paper is half the battle. And it's similar with coding. If you have an idea of how to approach something, just go ahead and write it down. And then from there, new ideas will spawn. And just getting it to paper is sometimes 80% of the effort. And then the 20% of writing it gives you that 80% result. You'll also want to set a schedule. And this really comes down to self-awareness and when are you most productive? Are you most motivated in the morning, the afternoon, or the evening? For me, it's the morning. I know for me personally, if I leave certain creative content towards the end of the day, I just won't do it because I won't feel motivated to do it at that time. Most of the time, I try not to take a meeting until the creative work is done because then I'll just procrastinate the creative work. Coding is more problem solving and a lot of times you have a specification to work from so like I can do that any time of the day but just in general understanding what types of work you like to do at what parts of the day can be key in staying productive. Another thing I like to do is create routines surrounding my work day and so when my work day ends I immediately go work out and that just changing your scenery and your senses helps you transition to another part of your day or to another mindset. So working out helps with this, like cooking a meal, like things where I'm not staring at a screen because you can literally stare at a screen 24 hours a day now with the quarantine. You get up, you watch TV, you play Animal Crossing, and now you've looked at a screen the whole day. So for me, transitioning to like off-screen activities at least for like an hour or two after work really, really helps. For before work, the smell of coffee wakes me up, just getting ready for the day, changing your clothes. I only changed the top. Now that we're all work from home, I do wear leggings literally all day and it's great. But you change your top and that for me has been good enough to feel professional and to like do my work and to stay focused on my work. Some people will go the whole shebang. But for me, definitely changing into a more professional top, eating a meal, so eating breakfast. So it's really about changing your senses, whether that's smell, taste, like hearing, ears, so putting on a certain type of music when you're working and feeling productive. Um, just changing the way you feel is really gonna help with those transitions between work and home, because that balance can be tough. In fact, I actually put away my laptop. I literally put it into a backpack and like hide it in my closet when I'm off work, no work hours. And I also turn off the notifications from my work apps on my phone so that I will not look at it. Sticking with this theme of like no screens, at least when you're not working, like I, everyone loves Animal Crossing or watching TV, but the off screen time really helps me stay sane. Like in this quarantine, before I would just like, go to happy hour after working from home. But now you don't really have that opportunity. So figuring out how to stay away from screens, even during lunchtime. So a lot of times I'll cook my lunch just to have something to do that's not looking at a screen. Sometimes I'll walk around the block. And so right now we are able to walk and exercise outside, but even just walking down a few streets and walking back can definitely help. Reading a book or calling a friend and catching up, like these you know, are typical things that you can do that one, don't require a lot of focus because coding and software development, it is a lot of like intense focus on what you're working on, but also it does, you're not looking at a screen literally 24 seven. Um, there's uh, the blue light glasses and all that that help, but it's still, I don't know. But looking at a screen can really make your brain tired. The last tip I'll give is if you're working with a company or with a manager and you are employed by them, 
I would let them know what you need in order to be successful at home. So that means, you know, now I'm working at home, I need a new monitor because like when I go to work, I usually have a monitor. Like now that we're in quarantine, for me to do my job successfully, like these are the tools I need. Your manager is not gonna know these things that it's been hard for you to code and looking at a small screen unless you tell them. Um, so you tell them, you know, hey, I've tried doing it this way for so many weeks. These are the issues I've had. Like these are the ways I've tried to solve it but it's just not working out. Like the solution that I see is X and you know, what do you think of doing X? Or even asking your manager, what tools have helped you work better at home? If they say, oh, I got this new monitor and it does this, then you might as well ask for one too. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was useful in some way, shape or form. Let me know what you think in the comments and happy coding.